today we are going to call mandibular premolar and uh, have drawn a round length and this is the me mesial side and this is the buccal side and this is the distal side and this is the lingual side so on that we are going to mark two lines on the, on the buccal side I am going to reduce the wax on the distal and middle sides in this way I am going to draw a notch here a deep depression like this followed by that I am going to reduce the wax until I reach the drawn line here okay see how I am reducing the wax I have reduced the wax both on the mesial and distal sides. See here, okay. Then, followed by that, I am going to draw a midline here and from the midline, I am going to draw two oblique lines, this short mesial and lengthier distal one okay can you see short mesial and lengthier distal margin ridge and i am going to reduce the wax towards the line can you see this I have reduced the wax until I reach the drawn line. You can see now I have reduced the wax on the mesial margin ridge and the distal margin ridge. Okay. Then I am going to draw a midline here. Okay. And I am going to draw another line here towards the buccal surface. Okay. Then coming to the buccal surface, <coughs> I am going to draw two lines dividing cervical one third middle one third and occlusal one third so i am reducing the wax from the first line towards the first line here okay okay from the first line towards the first line then I am reducing the cervical portion of the crown. I am making it round like this. And I am merging the two lines. Can you see now? Then I am going to draw a line here and I am reducing the wax in the oblique way so that I will get a oblique ridge on the buccal surface. Similar to that of canine and maglidary premolars okay can you see now that is an oblique ridge here i have made the crown more lingual tilted from the buccal side because the angulation of the 
mandibular teeth are more towards the lingual side compared to the maxillary teeth. That's the reason. Then coming to the occlusal region, I am going to reduce the wax along the slopes so that I can create a cusper prominence on the buccal side. Okay. Can you see now? Then I am going to round the lingual surface of the crown here. So like this, holding the crown like this, and I am going to reduce the wax so that the crown becomes major distally tapered towards the lingual surface and round. Okay. Can you see now? This is the buccal surface. You can see the short mesial margin and lengthy distal margin, and then off decrease. Okay. Then coming to the distal side, you can see the slope towards the lingual surface, and you can see the tapered lingual region compared to the buccal region, and you can see the slopes, the occlusal region. Then you can appreciate the shape of the crown here and we are going to call cuspal prominences ok the prominent buccal cusps and vestigial lingual cusp followed by the developmental group on the mesial side ok here we are going to call cusp buccal uh, prominent cusp so for that we are taking the this part of the carver and we are going to reduce the wax from the buccal surface towards the lingual surface like this and I am going to leave 0.5 mm margin here so that I am preserving the marginal ridge so in the same way I am going to do here also Followed by that, I am going to call the lingual cusps like this. This is small and vestigial, turning to other side. I am going to call like this. See, I am preserving the distal marginal ridge, which is prominent and I am carving the buccal prominent buccal cusps and the vestigial lingual cusps and I am rounding the lingual cusp region and I am rounding the cervical region on the buccal side that there will be a cervical constriction now you can see the carved cusps of the mandibular posterior you can see the buccal surface and distal surface with intact margin ridge and lingual surface with round 
and uh, small vestigial cusps and uh, measly you can see the prominent buccal cusp on the vestigial mingle cusp and then coming to the occlusal surface you can see prominent buccal and vestigial mingle cusp from this we are going to draw a mesial developmental groove from the center of the occlusal surface towards the mingle surface like this this is the main characteristic feature of the mandibula first fibula ok So I am reshaping the slopes of the crown. Now you can see the buccal surface, the distal surface. And the lingual surface and the needle surface and the occlusal surface. You can see the developmental bow which is extending from the occlusal surface to the lingual surface of the crown like this. Okay. You can see the vestigial crown and uh, all the characteristic features of the mandibular first premula. Okay. Then we are going to call the root surface. Okay, the dish, we are uh, marking the length of the root like this. And I am going to reduce wax all around the crown. It's like the rust reduction of the wax. to cut the root surface which is tapered from the cervical region to the apex region After carving that, I am going to elevate the root apex on the distal region like this.
is the root and then I'm going to call the cervical line here and I'm going to match the root surface towards the cervical line I'm going to match the root surface towards the cervical line like this so that I can get a proper cervical construction Okay, then we will start polishing the carbon. By holding on the crown surface, so that it will not break off and separate from the wax block. see some roughness here and I am going to make it smooth now you can see the buckle surface and the distal surface Lingual surface, and the distal surface. Okay. Thanks, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like my videos, and share my videos. And please do subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you, thank you very much.